So I'm Chief Superintendent Phil Dolby. I'm the Commander of Policing in Warsaw. And how long have you been uh, working for the police? I've been in the police 28 years and I've been the commander here for nearly three. And why is the commander like the highest role here? It is, yeah. Yes. yeah. So the whole borough, uh, which is split in our policing service by four police stations. So they, we're in Blockswich right now. Mm. We have a station at Aldridge. Uh, we have a station at Woodenhall and we have offices in the town hall. And we've got 999 offices at both of those. We've got uh, neighbourhood teams and partnerships teams and offender manager teams all around the borough. Well, our, our main job isn't just to um, stop crime, but it's uh, to help people feel safer where they live. Because um, if you don't feel safe where you live, it's going to affect your quality of life. It's going to affect businesses feeling it's okay to come and, like Warsaw, needs, mm. needs more businesses, doesn't it? If people mm. don't feel it's safe to run a shop there, then why would they come in? We, we um, obviously we arrest baddies and catch them doing bad things, but we also keep the road safe. We find missing people. We do a lot with our partners to try and make the community a better, safer place, whether it's what policing do or we just do things as a partnership. So I'm the chair of the Community Safety Partnership, uh, which is partners, including us, the council, housing, fire, uh, all sorts of folks come together. We try and make the place safer. So it's not just, uh, saving lives which we do and catching criminals which we do but it's also you know the best thing is prevention uh, don't know if you're old enough forgive me but archbishop desmond tutu was a very famous uh worth looking him up he's mm. a very very famous african uh, archbishop that used to be famous going around the world preaching peace and things and he had this really good phrase that said that if you're seeing somebody keeps drowning in the river don't keep saving them go upstream and stop the person that's chucking them in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the phrase we often use is get upstream. What can we do to intervene and prevent things happening? Can we build strong, cohesive societies? Can we, can we the police, help the way a family grows up to, to be um, better? So, because uh, we, we take the uniform off, we're people too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so, for example, um, we have offender managers whose job it is is to help people um, getting into crime or already in crime and the crime doesn't just mean stealing things it could be that you're a domestic abuse uh, offender or you're a child sex offender or something like that and it's about trying to find ways to help them to change their behaviors but also if they don't then we've got the tools to do something about it but we, we we've got funding and pathways to get them onto different things different courses and different uh, pieces of education and that might help them we might help them as weird as it sounds get somewhere to live because actually if they're on the streets burgling every day, yeah. high on heroin, uh, uh, you know, some people might go, that's a bit woke, helping an offender get home, but actually if he stops breaking into your house, <laughs> then isn't that better? We um, we put money into lots of youth work. Um, I described to you earlier that we've got youth scrutiny panels uh, that help us understand by watching our body-worn video that we show them. What was our stop and search like? What was our use of force mm -hmm. like? What was our... Um, how, what was our aftercare like? How well are we treating people? What's it like to be young in Warsaw? The whole borough, you know. Um, we have lots of um, community work with the schools, with the colleges, um, with the university. We've got dedicated officers in all four. We've got four dedicated officers in all the secondary schools. We do work in all the primary schools. Um, we'll do anything with anyone that will talk to us, really, yeah. because ultimately our job is to, I will say to my cops, I want you to earn the right to be the police yeah. of Warsaw because actually no one in Warsaw has got a choice you know with a monopoly provider you can't mm. go as a competitor you've only got us but we shouldn't rest in that and also we're funded by public money so it's easy, these are taxes coming out of people's pay packets or or off what they've earned so we, we should take that solemnly and not not waste it um, and so the police force that's trusted by their community is what we're after, that we've earned the right to be your police, that we have the legitimacy, the authenticity for you to feel. If I am stopped with by you, if my son is stopped by you, if my daughter is dealt with by you, that, that you know they're safe in our hands. Yeah. And the one job that gets that gets into the papers that where someone's done that badly, 
but there's a thousand that day that have gone really really well and often officers i get a almost daily i've got 400 400 staff and on every single day someone's hurt mm. one of my staff yeah mm. we've just had an officer very very badly injured that's not in the paper mm. yeah, so. um, where do you think that is well um good news doesn't sell and i think i think journalism is a really hard job normally and it's particularly hard at the moment with the print media becoming online which is about clicks isn't it mm. and so i think i mean actually i know most of the express and star reporters here and um, try and work closely with them but also i'll challenge them if i think what they've done is unfair um but it's about clicks and do you think there is a market out there to get these big brands like the express and star to maybe promote the positive side of police well we We have a whole corporate communications department. We have local, very active on social media. We're always trying to put out the good stuff that we do. Um, it doesn't get the same traction yeah. as sticking a boot in, unfortunately. Yeah. But we, you know, we, we invite them to come out on jobs with us, come on operations with us, um, do ride-alongs. You'd be welcome to come on a ride-along if you wanted and go out on patrol with the officers. And you know, we're not. We're trying to be as transparent and open as we possibly can be. Yeah. Got, I don't think we've got anything to hide. Yeah. Um, and we do an awful lot of good job that goes unreported. There are some things that we don't do well, find an organisation that does. But obviously our, our powers, our position in society, we can actually really affect how people feel, so we need to do that carefully. But that includes like how we do a football game, yeah. or how we do Commonwealth Games, or how we do whatever, you know. Your experience of going to watch a football game if there's police there, mm. um, we should be trying to make that an opportunity to engage with you, and, but also keep you safe from those yeah. that might try and hurt you. Uh, serious youth violence, which is uh, those where under 25s are committing violence, either as the offender or the victim, and often both, and particularly where it's knives are involved, not just knives, other weapons. So we, we measure that very, very carefully. We do a lot to try to intervene in that, but that's led to some very, very serious incidents in the country, but Warsaw's not been immune from that. We talked earlier about the Bailey Atkinson case. There were two murders last year by a knife. And we use it under 25 because uh, the country is historically one that says at 18 you're an adult. Mm. I don't know how old you two chaps are. You're both 20, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if you know this, but then it's, it's known throughout the scientific world and has been for some time that actually the human brain continues to develop until we're about 25. So, um, you know, you're obviously you know, smart young chaps and you know what you're doing. My my kids, other kids I know, really don't cope with the adult world at 18 very well at all. Uh, and so we try and measure violence under 25, but also there's, that's where all, all the interventions are. We've got a violence reduction partnership that everyone's involved in and puts money into and activities into sport and mentoring and things like that. We can get mentors into, you know, I showed you the juvenile detention rooms, didn't we? Mm. Or we can actually have a mentor that's nothing to do with the police come in and talk to someone and promise to follow them up. We've got those in, in casualty as well. So if someone comes in with a hole in them, they say, look, look where you are. Can we talk? I've got nothing to do with them, but I'll follow you up and I'll help you. We, we pay for those kind of things. So under 25 violence is, 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 is massive for me. And um, we've got too many people, too many kids just getting hurt, mm. usually by each other. And yeah, obviously you see the news all the time, like nice frames. You know, and all these kids stabbing people and yeah, stabbing if you carry children. a knife you increase your chances this is a this is again an academic fact if you if you possess a knife you increase your chances of being stabbed by that or another knife quite a lot mm. than if you didn't have one at all yeah we, we do a lot so the violence reduction partnership i described earlier we do stuff in that community safety partnership i described earlier but there's lots of things in the voluntary sector that's just brilliant so um, if I just bring one to mind, the James Brindley Foundation is about a... So James Brindley was a young man who lived in Aldridge and he was the subject of a robbery. The robbery was at knife point and within, I think, under 60 seconds of meeting, unfortunately, his attacker, he'd been stabbed and killed right outside the door where his family lived. His family have been magnificently brave, the parents, his sister, and set up the James Brindley Foundation and are ceaselessly working in the town, in the borough, in the region really, to try and um, 
stop kids doing it or having surrender bins or having mentoring or having anger management courses or all sorts of things wherever they can get it and it's hard in that world because the funding is is so difficult you know um, and so I always think of Mark the dad who I often work with around this and we've known each other for a few years now in this space he's, he's just he's actually one of my heroes I think he's he's, a, he's an incredible man and there's lots of other people doing other good things too um, we're trying to do some work with uh, uh, the Black Sisters and other uh, Black community um, organisations to try and uh, improve the relationships between the police and the Black community, which um, mostly through our fault has not been good for a long time. Um, I've, I've got a whole package of work that I'm doing, uh, which is um, based around improving how officers uh, understand the history of policing Black communities, about what Black communities have been through, how um, you know, I haven't had to teach my kids how to be stopped and searched by the police. I know black families that, that have had that. And the parents have gone, well, this is what happens if you stop and search. You know, that kind of thing. So um, we do a whole thing that says, um, this, is, this is Windrush, this is the riots, this is deaths in custody, this is things. Lots of good policing, but also some things that's not great. And we've often had that big gap between ourselves and our black communities who don't trust us. And we need to be have humility and have the, we should be making the effort. It's, you know, I don't like the phrase uh, "hard to reach communities." It's not their fault. It's um, seldom heard. You know, less heard, less yeah. represented communities. Mm -hmm. And I think, particularly in the West Midlands, it's our black communities that we're trying to do more around. Um, but then, I don't know if you heard of the phrase intersectionality. But basically, um, I'm white, but I'm also male. I happen to be a parent, I happen to be married, I happen to be a homeowner, I'm heterosexual. The next person next to me could be um, dual heritage from two different continents, uh, gender fluid, um, unemployed or working, you know, you know, one, basically you're more than one thing. So we have to be careful that if we are, so we're trying to do work with the black communities, we don't just, you know, what does black mean? Well, there's African and Caribbean and dual heritage and all sorts. So we're trying to see the person so we've got a wider view that says we need to do some work here, but also I don't know what it's like to be a young person in Warsaw. You know, what's that like? Is it do you feel safe? Do you feel seen? Do you feel that you trust the police? Or is it just somebody you don't need to, you need them? Um, do you care what we do? I, I you know, I don't go to community meetings where I live, but I run community meetings here for the people to come out to, you know, it's yeah. uh, <laughs> it, it's interesting. Um the but the 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 third sector, the volunteer sector. Is is very um, active in in the borough here. It's very very impressive. I've worked in other places, and there's something about the black country for me that feels that that, that kind of thing happens. I've worked in Dudley as well, um, and you know I respect them because they, you know, I'm not going to go out of business. I haven't got, you know, we we do what we can with the money we've got, and we we're one of the worst funded forces in the country actually. But um, trying to do what Mark does or what Vicky does or some of the others, it's really you know, I've got a lot of respect for. So there's a national thing called the Police Race Action Plan, which is specifically around black communities. Our last Chief Constable, who left just over a year ago, was one of the people who wrote it. And we're one of the icebreaker forces, which means we're the ones that are going furthest and fastest with it. So we have a whole load of work. So that the thing I've been doing, um, a thousand officers who've joined the police in the last three years have all received the package that we've designed and now I'm about to roll it out to all 12,000 officers. Everyone is going to have a quite confronting and triggering tough controversial discussion about how the history of policing black communities but the idea being let's move forward. Um, the Police Race Action Plan also is looking at all of our use of our powers to make sure they're as fair and effective as possible so um, how we do stop and search, how we do use and force, how we uh, use warrants to go into people's houses, how we um, arrest people, how we, when we stop cars, you know, we're the only force measuring those kind of things. Yeah. Um, we're doing uh, a load of work about uh, outreach with communities and then with partners. Um, it's a very active space in our force to do that. We know we're not representative of the communities that we've served from a diversity, from a race particularly point of view. And, you know, we're doing some work with some really honest uh, black 
boys usually, where the disproportionality of black boys that are in the criminal justice system is, you know, far outweighs any of the other cohorts that you could measure, which that's just not right. And they've been brave enough to talk to us, as saying, you know what, you have to treat us better for 10 years before we even think about thinking of the police as an employer of choice. But I also know I'm nowhere near enough that we would like we, when we have new black colleagues, and I've spoken to them, I've seen them speak to their colleagues and say, do you know, here, by joining here, I've lost friends. It didn't happen to me. So there's a, you know, there's, there's a, there's a whole lot of support we need to make sure that there, but we, we know that we have, uh, we don't have enough black officers. We don't have enough black senior officers, you know, to, to make people feel confident that the force or the service we prefer to call as our service is something that uh, black communities can trust. And then, like we talked about when we were in the taser room downstairs, you know, something like George Floyd, something like Mark Duggan, which had nothing to do with any of us, but affects all of the community. Child Cube, nothing to do with us. Terrible, outrageous. Um, but there was an interesting moment uh, which really laid it down for me. And I don't know what you think about this. I stood in front of 48 officers on the third day of their police service that just joined us. And only three of them knew who Stephen Lawrence was. Now, I don't blame any of them for that, because that's not what the kids at school are taught. The, my kids are taught about the Egyptians and the Romans and the Victorians at least three times, it feels like, in the Second World War, and they all have their place. But actually, the history of the West Midlands and its place in the slave trade, the history of the West Midlands uh, and how the communities have been, um, you know, Windrush, um, the, the, the moments in our communities when things have really disestablished, like the disorders. Those are things that you know, our young kids are growing up and not knowing about, and they don't know about Stephen Lawrence and what that meant, and what it means. Um, I think that's really, it doesn't feel like we're setting our officers up right if they don't know those things. And also the communities they serve should know those things happen. So I was in the riots in 2011, in uniform, not. <laughs> um, and you know, you know three people died and uh, officers were shot at and we had disorders and flames and cars on fire and things being thrown at us and other people only in 2011 and an officer was saying I'm just about to be posted to Lizelle and I didn't know anything about that well then that's why I've designed this with others to help them be equipped it feels like you know I've shown you all the different equipment that people wear well I think that cultural knowledge is part of their equipment to help them to deliver the best service that they possibly can. Um, what do you think of the police? And you don't have to say that the nice things if you don't want to. What, what, what should, I, what should I, I be doing? Per, per, personally, well, obviously where I am from, a uh, bit like Warsaw, you know, very poverty stricken and high crime rate. And, Luckily enough, I've never had a run in with the police, but you know, so people have their opinions. People say that they're abuse of power, and you get, get all them comments. You know, like, like I, I respect the police because you know, if something's going to happen, this is the first one I'm going to go run into. And I, it's the same with everyone, but you know, I know in I grew up in a council estate, and this is all like you know, the pigs, and I, I viewed it all about that's easy though, isn't it? It's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've grown up in a council estate, a bit of a rough part of town. I heard all about the police, but that doesn't mean I've never been treated badly by the police. Yeah. I've never had a bad experience with them. You haven't got out here yet. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, that's a, that's a different sector, but uh, yeah. yeah, I have never had a bad one. I don't. I respect the police, and you know, obviously, it's a brave job what you do, and you know, thank you for everything you've done as well. And for myself as well, same as Alex, never had any experiences. Luckily, I know you mentioned with the community that yeah, I'm, no, I'm involved in, but. As you were saying, I am surrounded by people who do see the negative side of the police, mm. and sometimes I think that's more of a stereotype and an easy cop out to kind of say I, that. I think it can be, but also the statistics are true that if you are a young black boy, you are more likely by some margin to be uh, in the criminal justice system or to be incarcerated, to be stop and search, to be subject to the use of force. Yeah. You know, if you don't mind it, I'm sat with a, a young white man and a young black man. The, the, the statistics are very different by this force. Yeah. It's actually pretty good in Warsaw. We work, we work really hard at it, but that's still not right. Yeah. Um, we In part of the package, we show officers, um, this, this young uh, bunch of black lads that really kindly spoken to us, the ones I spoke about that are being brave, and, and even though 
they're finding it really difficult, but they've still come out and they want us to, to see them and listen to them. This one comes in, with, we don't do it anymore because we've got mobile devices, but back in the day, if you were stop searched, you used to get a little form saying, this is what's happened to you, these are your rights. He came in with a shoebox full of them, bursting. He's never been arrested, he's never been in any trouble, but he's, he he's, lives in Edgbaston and he's black. Yeah. Well, I used to police Edgbaston, you know, I might have been one of them that did it. Um, another guy comes in and says, I've got a friend gave me a really good tip. He says, when I walk past Digford Police Station, wear pretend sun, uh, spectacles. You don't get stopped and searched half as much. And he says, you know what, it works. Mm. Broke my heart to hear that. We're doing that to them. Yeah. You know, so um, we just need to be ceaseless and uh, never stop being able to confront ourselves as well as give the community a voice that says that was not good enough. You are not good enough. And we should have that. Like I say, we need to earn the right to be the police. Not just for, we're talking about uh, black police because that's kind of what the police race action plan is about. Mm -hmm. But the other thing about, um, you know, hate crime, so that where someone's a victim of crime because they're different, different. Well, we get reporting about race and we get reporting about religion. And I bet those are both underreported as well. So I might have been hit, but if I'm hit and someone is saying something racist or, or religiously um, discriminatory, then we, it, gets, it gets recorded in a different way. We don't get any recording. So about those two are more than we get. We don't get any recording about disability or gender um, or other strands of diversity that are less overtly different. You know, um, you know I don't know your mental health. I don't know your sexuality. I don't know your faith. Um, the things that are overtly different. So like again, I've got a white guy and a black guy. Um, if someone wanted to have a go at you, mm -hmm that's uh, more obvious, but if they wanted to go at you because of something you believe in or the way that you choose your lifestyle, mm -hmm. that might be less likely to happen because you're, so, you're not so overtly um, different. So we just have to, we just have to never give up and yeah. we have to keep asking ourselves the tough question. We keep having, we get the community, we've got reference groups coming out of our, of our, of our communities where good people are deciding to come and we give them a voice and say, ask us the tough questions. And we promise them, you know, this yeah. week I'm meeting, I run the African Caribbean reference group with a bunch of people with really strong opinions about what we do. And they're not all positive, which is brilliant. Come and ask us some really tough questions. And every single, two, every other month, whoever they want to speak to, like I just showed them around the firearm, this time we're going to talk to the custody leaders and they come in and say, right, I'll show you anything. I'll ask anything. I'll answer anything just to, but that's one room of people that yeah. doesn't know it happens, you know. Yeah. I think being transparent is obviously the best way to be. It kind of shows the public eye how you guys really are. And obviously, as Alex said, we are thankful for everything that you guys have done. Thank you. Uh, ultimately, I'll just finish with this. I think to have legitimacy in the eyes of the public, you know, when we're being criticised that it's our public in Warsaw that are the ones defending how we police them. Yeah. That's, the, that's the, we've never quite achieved that yet, but that's the dream. But they can only do that if they are being treated fairly, if they are being treated legitimately, are they being fair, fairly treated by us. Um, so we have to do it without fear or favour. That's what we say when we join. So I um, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you as well.